Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you. So today, the six hour challenge. Peapotty One started this thing. Rick Rabjohn, Old Hickory Forge, County Line Forge, HOJ Forge. They've all jumped in. So it's my task to build a knife in six hours that can chop hardwood, chop an ice block, do a rope slice, and then after all that, cut paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, miracles do happen, I suppose. And uh, we're going for one today. So, anyway, stick with me, guys. I'll see you on the other side of this thing. And then we'll take a look at it and have a little talk about it and figure out what went wrong. I don't... <laughs> we'll see. All right, guys. Stick with me. It should be fun. Thanks. All right, guys. I'll try to keep this in the background as often as I can so you can see that. And I'll give you regular checks with my cell phone and the clock on that. So uh, keep me honest here. So anyway, um, we're going to wait until this counts down to noon, and then we're going to get started. So uh, a little nervous. I'm going to start with that. Some piece out of that in here or something. I don't know. And uh, That's it. I have no plan. I have no design. I have no idea of what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do and we're going to see how it comes out and let the metal lead me. So wish me luck. I've watched all these other guys and uh, Peapotty, Rick Rab John, Old Hickory Forge, County Line Forge. I've watched all these guys. They're pretty darn good at what they do. So the advantage I have is some machinery I just got to let my creativity take me where I go. So anyway, let's get moving on this, guys. We'll see what <laughs> happens. So, uh, yeah. Wish me luck. All right, guys. It turns noon, and it's time to go. So we've got six hours to get this thing done. And uh, this is where I'm starting. In any, in any case, uh, we've got one hour that is going to be used for heat treat. So starting at noon, that'll take us to 7 o'clock. I'm just going to keep going, and at the end, I'll deduct one hour and see how long it takes. That's about the best I can do. And honestly, when I was doing this, moving the camera around for the different shots, making sure the angle was correct, the light was okay, and uh, trying to make sure the clock was somewhere it was visible took uh, <laughs> probably more time than most of the things that I did. So it would have gone a little quicker, I think, had someone had been, you know, filming for me and that kind of thing. But here nor there, it makes no difference. It did not affect the outcome whatsoever, other than maybe a little bit of time. So as I was cutting out the leaf spring on this thing, it um, had some lines in the rust that just resembled a uh, sack. So that's what we're going to go for, something that resembles that. Building it this quickly and without any plans, it's just hammer it out and see what comes out basically. But that's kind of the shape I'm going for here. And I'm going to use just about every hammer that I've got hanging in the hammer rack. We're using this larger Alex Steel thing to uh, sort of get the basic shape going. And I'm heating it up here a couple of times pretty high as I'm working it. Um, I found that working with uh, leaf spring, if you bring it up to temperature several times and then work it until it's cold, it tends to lose that uh, memory that it had and it doesn't want to turn back into a leaf spring when you temper it or when you quench it. So we took a few extra heats at a little higher temperature to get where we needed to go. And I'm going to leave that there to anneal and put it on the floor and it's still way too warm. So we got a couple of minutes, but not that much time. So we put on some gloves, and uh, I got to notch this thing for a tang. We're gonna go with a hidden tang on this thing, 
and that little bandsaw. The steel was hot, the bandsaw was a little dull, and it just didn't want to cut that, so we went to a cutoff wheel. There we are. We're about 55 minutes into this, and we need to get that tang heated up. This is where the machinery is going to help me out. Floyd's going to jump in and help me with this. I could have hammered it out fairly quickly, but this made it a lot easier and probably saved me, I don't know, three or four heats at least. All right, we'll do the final shaping with a hammer. In one of my other videos, I talked about one of my favorite hammers. This guy here, he's a little two-pound hammer. Got him at, oh, geez, McLennan Hardware. I don't know, 15 years ago or more. And it seems to be my, sort of my go-to hammer. I don't know why. All right. Bring this guy up to heat. I've been doing a lot of scrubbing on it. These uh, leaf springs had a lot of uh, rust and pitting in them, and as they're scaling them up, it's scaling up, I'm uh, brushing that scale off, and it uh, is helping reduce the pitting from that. That and working it uh, down into a colder heat will tend to plunge it and smooth it out a little bit, so it'll be a little less grinding to do. And I plan on leaving some of the hammer marks uh, up towards the spine anyway. I want to give it that sort of. Oh, I don't know, Viking look, I guess you call it. I don't know what Viking things look like. They probably finish their stuff off nice. But uh, it'll give it a you know an old antique kind of look, I guess. I like that. All right. There we go. 130. Okey-doke. We're going to let this guy cool off on the anvil here. And we're going to measure him for something or handle. And I haven't really figured out what yet. So it's cooled down. We got it jigged up in our bevel jig. And we're going to use the, the beveling jig just to get this thing started. And once we get those bevels um, established, then we're just going to go for it by hand. It'll be a little bit quicker than having to deal with that jig. And I'm okay once the bevels are established, I'm pretty good at it. Just establishing those by hand, freehand, is uh, not the greatest at that. Actually, to be honest with you, I just... <laughs> Bevely jig is for me. <laughs> All right. There you go. And I have no idea why I kept that glove on other than the fact that I was just in a hurry and didn't have time to take it off. All right, there's your time check. Make sure our little battery-operated clock is keeping uh, correct time here. All right, now we're going to give this thing a... Oh, I burned a hole in my tube. We're going to give this thing a, a normalizing cycle. And I'd like to do this more than once, but it's just going to be one time because, and it's going to be probably the shortest normalizing cycle you've ever seen. There it is, about 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And we're going to put the gloves back on because it's still hot to the touch. And we're going to take some of that scale off there so we can get this thing shaped and then... Uh, figure out a handle for it. I don't want to quench it until I've done some of the handle work. And we're going to put some notches in this hidden tang. Something for the uh, epoxy to hold on to. There we go. And I've got kind of a kind of a different thing I want to do with the tang that'll help me out with my epoxy and help me move forward a little bit quicker. I thought about this when I got just about to this point and I had pretty much turned the forge off at that point because I wasn't going to need it until you know uh, time to quench this thing. All right, we're going to mill out this little bolster plate. 
I guess that's what it's called. Normally it would be where I guess the guard would be, but in this case it's just going to butt up against the handle and we'll contour it to match the handle. All right, a little bit of filing. Make those corners square and she fits on there pretty good. Right on. Okie doke. So I found a piece of antler and the wide part of the antler is about as wide as the uh, blade itself so this is going to be a, a little bit backwards handle is going to be a little little conical shape towards the hilt there we go we're at 330 times are running out we got to get moving So this handle is going to be slightly backwards and I could grind the bone or the antler so that there's sort of a little guard up behind that bolster plate and all that but I don't think I'm going to have time for all that. I got to get through this thing and get it put together. I still have to quench it, temper it, which isn't on the clock so I'm not worried about that but uh, grind it sharpen it. I got a lot to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw at the end of this tang and uh, I'm going to round it off slightly but not completely. I'm going to keep it a little bit large and I'll take it over to the grinder later and I'll round it, round it off. And I'm going to thread that so that when I put my handle on I can put a nut on there hold it all together so that will be my clamp for the epoxy and I can continue working on the handle to save myself some time and see how that works out. So I just took that to the, the belt sander and I spun it around on there and made it just about the right size and then I just left it up to the tap and it did a pretty good job of uh, machining that down. That's why I didn't want to quench this blade or do any you know temporary heat treating heat treating on it until after I got this sort of set I didn't want to have to deal with steel it was too hard all right 408 and technically we have about three hours left but I'd like to get it done sooner than that so here's the quench and there was a little uh, little birdie from the UK kind of gave me a an idea of the temperature to quench this at to get the best result and following those instructions I'll have to say it came out pretty darn good it's got that nice gray look to it and as I'm watching the YouTube videos of these experts they're telling me that that uh, has turned to martensite or something like that but it came out hard there we go we put it in the heat treat for an hour and then off to the grinder at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and it came out with a real light straw color to it and I'm supposing that that's good I you know if I were doing chisels that kind of thing um, I could give you a better idea but when it comes to the edge of a knife, because of the variance in the bevel, the colors run differently. Just kind of strange. All right. So, epoxy, plate on the bottom. Cut ourselves another plate, drilled a hole in it for the top. And then I took a nut. It's a quarter 20 nut. And I ground it on the belt grinder to give it a little bit of an acorn type nut shape. And we'll eventually grind that stud off and uh, peen it a little bit to blend in. And that's going to hold that thing together while I do all this. I'm not going to have to wait for that epoxy to dry for too long. A couple of minutes and I was at the grinder with it. So now we're getting close. And grind off all that excess. Take that bolt down to that little nut that we made. And we're going to go through a few belts here and I'm going to end up at about a thousand grit belt and that's going to be pretty much my final sharpening on that thing, that belt. And here we are. 629 is when we finish this thing. 
All right, guys, so it's the next morning, and we're going to do our testing now. I had to gather up the wood and the ice and the rope. In any case, you can kind of see some of those grinder marks from the heavier belts up towards the hammer marks on this thing that I just didn't have time to take out. I was not going to even attempt hand sanding this thing, so there you go. That's the knife. And we're going to put this guy to a good test here and see how she does. All right, guys, wish me luck. Here we go. All right, we have a piece of hickory. It's been drying for about eight years here in the shop. Um, good and hard. Ice, rope, 10 chops, five chops, one chop. I'm afraid of that one. See what happens. We have some paper. See if it holds together. Let's check the edge out. Looks pretty good. Okay guys, there's one thing left to do. We gotta measure this thing and make sure we didn't go over. So, the blade, the blade, let's get a tape measure on that blade. And held up, we're just a hair under eight inches. All right, and we're going to go, you have to back up for this one. Let's see, gonna go all the way down to the end of the handle at the one inch mark right there and we are at 13 looks like 13 and just about quarter inches so I think we're well within our parameters there all right so little knife did well it uh, held up under all that hardwood and ice and it almost made it all the way through the rope, one strand short, and uh, it still cut through paper after that. So I'm really happy about that. And uh, yeah, it, uh, I don't know, pretty darn good. Anyway, so I'm going to call it a success on, on my part. Uh, I think it was a lot of luck, really, and uh, some good advice from some good people. So thanks for checking it out, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for stopping by Big Dog Forge. I can't say thanks enough. And thanks to all you folks who have subscribed recently. Patreon guys, you're awesome. And uh, if you think about it, why don't you hit the little like button. And share the videos. That's what we do. And then uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you have subscribed, make sure you ring the little bell. And it'll notify you every time I put out a video. And that's a good thing. So uh, thanks guys. 
again, and uh, we're going to call it good. So take care and be safe, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye now.